to another Wheel of Time video. Uh, before we hop into the main part of the video here, I just wanted to stop and say how awesome all the support uh, that we've been getting on the channel is it's been getting up and started here. Um, I, when I started this, I really just wanted to have a forum to talk about the series, and uh, obviously I love it so much. So um, it's been great to have so many people give feedback in the comments and on Twitter. Uh, it's just been fun to be able to talk about the series, and I'm looking forward to keeping uh, on being able to do that. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, though, uh, please do hit the subscribe button below as it really helps the channel grow. Um, and stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to give you some details on a very cool contest that I am running. Well, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Uh, before we dive too far in, let me go ahead and throw up a spoiler rating here for this video. Uh, it's going to have a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will have major spoilers for The Wheel of Time all the way up until the final book. Uh, if you haven't finished the series, you have been warned. So the magic system of the Wheel of Time is so intricate and so detailed, with the rules and mechanics being so well defined, it always left me wondering while I was reading the books who the strongest channelers were. We're given hints throughout the book in terms of comparison between characters and their strength and various skills, and the Wheel of Time companion gives me even more information about strength. But I really wanted to put together a comprehensive list of the strongest channelers of the One Power. We're going to start this series by taking a look at the forces of the lights. We're going to kind of split it up. We're not going to do the Forsaken or, or Dreadlords or anything like that. We're going to focus on who the strongest channelers are for the forces of the light. Now, one thing that Robert Jordan makes very clear in interviews and in his writing is the fact that raw strength and the power does not always equate to being superior. Uh, while strength is the largest factor, there are other ways that characters can augment their strength, various talents that you can have more skill with, and skill and experience with weaves can make a channeler more powerful than someone with more raw strength than they have. Because of this, I've come up with a ranking system that we're going to use as a criteria for our rankings in the video. The first of the criteria is raw strength and the power. It is stated in the books that men are typically stronger in the raw amounts of the power that they can draw. But women tend to have better control of the weaves and more dexterity. The scales that are given in the companion show two separate ranking systems, one for men and one for women. While I'm not going to get into the specifics of that ranking system in this video, I will do another video another time on, on the way people rank in the Wheel of Time scale there. But I am going to be drawing on those rankings to show strength in this video. One thing we know from this is that a woman at the top of the ranking scale in strength, despite being technically able to draw less of the one power than a man at the top level of the men's rankings, are roughly equal in strength or power due to the agility that women have with weaving. As strength is the most important of the criteria, I'm going to go ahead and give more weight to the character's level of strength. We will rank this on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the strongest that someone can be. The second criteria that we're going to use will be talent. In other words, what special skills with the power is the character known for, and how many special skills does the character have? As this is important, but not as important as raw strength and the power, we're going to rank characters here on a scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being the best in regards to talents. Our third criteria is objects of power. I feel like this is very important to factor in the discussion as there are many characters who wield objects that give them further strength or abilities that give them an edge. We're going to go ahead and rank this on a scale of 1 to 5 with 5 being the most powerful and the channel are having the object the most often. Our last criteria is going to be feats of strength. This is an area where a character has demonstrated their ability and strengths with the power. Raw power is one thing, but being able to demonstrate the power through actions is what we're going to use to determine our most powerful channelers. This will also be measured on a scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being the best. In total, our characters will have a score out of a total of 25. I've got to say, I drew out a tentative list before I started making this ranking system, and the results are going to be close to what I had, but there are definitely a few surprises even for me based on my initial thoughts and then when I did the rankings. And I think, though, that'll actually make some sense when you really think about it. But without further ado, let's dive into our list of the top 10 channelers of the One Power on the side of the light. Coming in at number 10 on our list is Moraine Damadred. Now let's take a look at Moraine's power rankings. Uh, in regards to raw strength, she clocks in at 4 out of 10. She is by far the person with the lowest strength on our list, but she was quite powerful in comparison to most Aes Sedai of her time. Before the appearance of Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve, she was among the most powerful of the Aes Sedai, with only really Cadswain being able to outmatch her. But as the story progressed, we find that there are far more channelers with greater strength levels than her. 
In regards to Moraine's talent levels, she does have a few that are worth mentioning. Moraine is quite a strong healer, having the talent almost as strong as any sister in the tower. She also had considerable skill at controlling weather. She was able to summon mist and create strong gusts of winds without exerting too much of her strength. We're going to give Moraine a score at 2 out of 5 for her talents. Next up is Objects of the Power, and here's another area where Moraine does fairly well. There are essentially two parts to Moraine's story, before her capture by the Elfin and after. In both times, she carried an Angriol that was able to amplify her skill with the power. An Angriol that she had prior to falling through the doorframe was of medium strength, but was able to give her strength through many of her journeys, and she was able to perform a lot of her feats with that object. She received a bracelet Angriol from the Elfin that was almost a Sa Angriol. Because most characters in the series don't have access to Angriol or Sa Angriol, and she had it, it put her on par with a lot of other channelers in the series. We're going to go ahead and give her a score of 4 out of 5 with Objects of the Power. Lastly, Moraine has a number of feats of strength to her name, despite not being in the books for very long. She has killed a Forsaken, which is something that not many characters can claim after she bail-fired Bilal, although she did catch him by surprise, so she didn't really overpower him. She also held Aganor at the Eye of the World with the power for some time, something that both he and she was surprised she was able to do. Uh, but she was using her Angriol at this time. She has shown herself to be able to defeat large numbers of Shadowspawn by herself as well, almost single-handedly defending Emmons Field on Winter Night and protecting the party from much of their journey after. So for feats of strength, Moraine is going to get a score of 2 out of 5. Overall, Moraine scores a 12 out of 25, placing her at number 10 on our list. Coming in at number 9 of the list of the strongest channelers of the One Power is Avienda. <laughs> Now let's dive into her scores. In regards to her strength, she gets a 6 out of 10, being one of the stronger female channelers on the side of the light in regards to pure strength. Um, she's only surpassed by a few others. By the end of the series, she was still not even at her potential, as she hadn't been forced like Egwene was, uh, despite the two of them having the same potential level. Avienda really shines when it comes to her talents. She has quite a few different talents and a couple that are unique to her. She has the ability to read residues of other weaves and the ability to copy that weave. She has the rare talent of being able to understand what a weave would do before it was done being weaved. And this gave her a significant advantage in a duel with the power as she could tell what the other person was going to be weaving. She also had the ability to read what a Tarangriol could do just by holding so she could hold an object and be able to tell what it could do. Other abilities she possessed were the ability to unweave, essentially meaning she could pick apart a tied-off weave as to not leave a residue for others to follow. This was something that no Aes Sedai could really do. She was also very strong at splitting her weaves multiple ways and was very good at defensive weaves and cutting down weaves of the attacker. Due to her multitude of talents and their rarity, Avienda scores a 5 out of 5 on talents. Avienda never really carried any objects of power for any time within the series, so she doesn't have much to help her score here. Because of this, she gets a 0 out of 5 on Objects of the Power. In regards to feats of strength, Avienda's main feat was defeating Grendel at Sheol Ghul during the last battle. She was overmatched in regards to strength and experience, but she was able to reflect one of Grendel's compulsion weaves back at her after picking apart a gateway. Because she doesn't have too many other feats of uh, strength when channeling, she scores a 2 out of 5. Avienda scores a total of 13 out of 25, and that comes in at number 9 on our list. So we're switching genders for number 8 here. Dammer Flynn comes in at number eight on the list. <music> Dahmer Flynn is an Ashaman, one of Rain's most trusted Ashaman actually. He is strong with the power, but not as strong as some of the other male channelers on our list. He comes in with a strength rating of 6 out of 10. Flynn really shines when it comes to his talents. He is one of the most prolific healers in the entire world, equal to Nynaeve in terms of his power with healing. He does things with the power that most other channelers cannot even dream of doing in regards to healing. Being at the top of the charts with healing is enough for Dammer to get a 5 out of 5 in regards to talents. Dammer Flynn doesn't carry any major objects of power we know about within the books, and therefore scores a 0 out of 5 when it comes to objects of the power. In regards to feats of strength, Dammer Flynn does have a couple that push his score here. He learns how to heal stilling, which is something that he did independent of Nynaeve's discovery of the same thing. He also saves Rand's life after he's nicked with the Shadar Logoth dagger by Pat on Fane. He's able to isolate the corruption and block it off from Rand's body, something that other Aes Sedai are in awe of his ability to do. During the cleansing of Sidene, he fends off the Forsaken Demodred in a circle, leading the flows and countering the Forsaken. For his feats of strength, Dammer Flynn gets a score of 3 out of 5. So in total, the first man on our list comes in with a total score of 14 out of 25, putting him at number 8. Another Ashaman occupies the next spot on our list with Jahar Narshima coming in at number 7. 
Now, Shima is among the strongest of the male channelers, just behind Loghain and Rand in pure strength. His strength level comes in at an 8 out of 10. In regards to talents, we are told how strong he is and how often he is used by Rand, but we aren't explicitly told of any amazingly special talents. Uh, he is a good healer, and his levels of strength always allow him to split his flows multiple ways, and he is able to create fairly large sized gateways, which is typically a indicator of large talent with the power. Because he just doesn't have a lot of talents that we know of, his talent score is going to come in at a 2 out of 5. Now he has a complicated score when it comes to objects of the power. He doesn't have any that belong to him specifically, but he does, on multiple occasions, use one of the strongest Sa'angriels in existence, as he uses Kalendor. He wields the sword that is not a sword during the cleansing of Sidene. Because he uses a very strong Sa'angriel, and he doesn't always have it, we're going to give him a score of 3 out of 5 with Objects of the Power. In regards to feats of strength, Narshima does not have a defining moment, but rather a culmination of being present for many of the battles throughout the course of the series. Uh, he was one of the original Ashermen to rescue Rand at Dumai's Wells, fighting all the way up until the last battle with Rand. He helps Egwene fight Tyene at the last battle, and participates in the cleansing of Sidene. Despite all of these things that he has been a part of, we don't ever see him do anything distinct to himself. Because of this, he gets a score of 2 out of 5 on feats of strength. Mainly due to his strength, Narshima gets a score of 15 out of 25, putting him in at number 7 on our list. Back to the female side of things for number 6, Cod Swain. The legendary Aes Sedai from the Green Aja is one of the strongest Aes Sedai of the age, and if not for Elaine, Egwene, and Nynaeve, she would have been the strongest to wear the shawl. Her strength rating, given that she's reached her full potential long ago, she's almost 300 years old, is a 6 out of 10. In regards to her talents, it is stated in the books that Cod Swain has many talents and is very skilled at weaving and battling others with the power. She is the most skilled Aes Sedai, in fact. She has the ability to read residues from previous weaves and is talented at healing. She is also very experienced in cool under pressure. She's able to learn a weave with just watching it once. Her score with talents clocks in at a 3 out of 5. In regards to objects of the power, Cad Swain has a whole group of objects that help her and augment her strength. She carries a Paralis net, which is a grouping of Angriol and Tarangriol that she wears in her hair. Each of these items has different uses, but they all add to her strength. She carries an Angriol, and though while it's not a strong one, we are told that it does put her on level with the strongest male channelers. She also carries a well, which gives her a storage battery for the power, as well as a number of Tarangriol that detect channeling and diffuse weaves aimed at her similar to Matt's medallion. She she has another Tarangrial that creates a shield around her body that protects her physically. Given her possession of all of these items for the entire time we know her in the series, she scores a 5 out of 5 on Objects of the Power. Cad Swain has many feats of strength to her credit in the past, let alone what we get to see during the novels. She has captured more men who could channel in her lifetime than the rest of the Red Aja combined, and she's a green. She defends Rand during the cleansing and creates an impenetrable shield over him and Nynaeve. She also discovered Simiraj at Rand's meeting with the Shanchan. Her score of feats of strength is only 3 out of 5, mainly because we don't see many of her main actions on the page. We're just told about them in a historical fashion. Cad Swain earns a total score of 16 of 20 putting her at number 6 on our list. Egwene Alvere, the Amarlin seat and hero of the final battle, comes in at number 5 on our list. Egwene is one of the strongest channelers of the age, and due to her being forced in her progression with the One Power in her time as a Damani with the Shanchan, she has reached her full potential, putting her slightly ahead of Elaine and Avienda, who she shares potential level with. Her power ranking is a 7 out of 10. In regards to talents, Egwene has a few that are unique to her. She is the only dreamer of the age among Aes Sedai, but we later learn that this is not necessarily a talent of the One Power, as others can enter the dream without being able to channel. So this won't weigh heavily in her channeling score. She is very strong with metals and earth, which is rare among women, and she's able to split her flows many ways, almost up to 14, which is something that no other Aes Sedai says they can match. But this is mainly due to the result of her strength. She rediscovered the ability to make Quindiar, uh, which is the indestructible substance that the uh, seals the Dark One's prison were made of, and she was able to turn an entire chain in the harbor of the White Tower into Quindiar. Egwene's score with talents is a 2 out of 5. Even though she's a dreamer, Egwene's score with talents is only a 2 out of 5 because dreaming is not necessarily a talent of the One Power. In regards to objects of the power, Egwene has the same issue here that Narshima did with Kalendor. 
For the majority of the series, we don't see Egwene using any objects of power. But on two big occasions, we see her using Bora's Sa'angrial, the most powerful object in the possession of the White Tower. Since she only sometimes has the Sa'angrial, she gets a score of 3 out of 5 with objects of the power. Egwene has a number of amazing feats of strength that set her apart. She was able to rediscover the making of Quendiar. She defended the White Tower from the Shan Chan while dosed with Forkroot by linking with novices and using Vora Sa'angrial, making her the hero of the battle. She defeated Masana in the tower, even though this was not really with the power, it was in the World of Dreams. Her most famous feat of strength is coming up with the new weave, the Flame of Tarvalin, during the last battle, and using it to heal the world from the damage of Balefire, while simultaneously killing all of the Sharan Channelers and Dreadlords under the command of Tyene. For feats of strength, Egwene gets a 5 out of 5. With a total score of 17 out of 25, Egwene is number 5 on our list. Coming in at number 4 is Loghain Albar. <laughs> Loghain is almost as strong as a man can be with the power, being just under the level of Rand, Ravin, and the Shamayel. Because of his raw strength and the power, he comes in at a 9 out of 10 on our scoring system. In regards to talents, Loghain has the ability to see Taviran. He is able to split his weaves many ways and weave many different weaves simultaneously. He learns very fast, seeing Rand weave Death Gates once and being able to duplicate the weave immediately. Due to Loghain not having any more specified talents, he gets a score of 3 out of 5 in this category. With Objects of the Power, Loghain carries Rand's Angriol for much of the time we see him when fighting later in the books. And with that and his already immense strength, this makes him very powerful. Due to only having it though at the end of the book, Loghain gets a 2 out of 5 with Objects of the Power. When it comes to feats of the power, Loghain has a few. He defeats the armies sent against him when he declared himself the Dragon Reborn using the power, which is impressive on that scale. He later learns destructive weaves from Rand when the farm that Rand is staying at after the cleansing is attacked, and he helps Rand destroy an entire army of Trollocs with the power. He also fights the Forsaken Demodred in the last battle, and he is only overwhelmed really due to the Sa'angriel that Demodred had in his possession. He helps win the last battle as he battles the forces of the Shadow and saves refugees from Trollocs and breaks the seals at the right times to open the boar so that it could be sealed. Loghain gets a 4 out of 5 from, with feats of strength. In total, Loghain earns a score of 18 of 25, putting him at number 4 on our list. Breaking into our top 3, the former Domani, Olivia. It is said that she is as strong as a woman can be with the power, and having been 400 years old at the time of the last battle, she has reached her full potential with the one power. She scores a 10 out of 10 in strengths with the power. In regards to talents, she is very skilled at using the power offensively. She can blow things up with the power even from great distance. She is also skilled at battling other channelers and shielding channelers. She has great skill due to her being a Damani for 400 years and gaining experience with that. She knows a great many different weaves. The only reason she does not get a perfect 5 in this category is that she really only knows destructive weaves and doesn't know basic healing, utilitarian weaves that most Aes Sedai know. She gets a 4 out of 5 with talents. With Objects of the Power, she uses Nynaeve's Paralysis Net during battle at Shadar Logoth and is able to repel Sindane with ease. Given that this is the only time that she uses it, she gets a 2 out of 5 with Objects of the Power. In regards to feats of strength, she fights and defeats Sindane, who is Landfear reincarnated, uh, at Shadar Logoth, and defends Ran with great skill, a one-woman wrecking force when all the other people had to link. She also fights Trollocs with devastating ability when the Trolloc army attacks the farm Ran stays at in tier after the cleansing. She gets a 3 out of 5 in feats of strength. Olivia gets a total score of 9 of 25 uh, and comes in at number 3 on our list. Coming in at number 2, one of our main characters, Nynaeve Almira. Nynaeve is extremely strong with the one power, almost as strong as a woman can be, yet not quite at the top of the charts. She clocks in with an 8 out of 10 in terms of strength with the power. Nynaeve is an extremely talented healer. She has healed things that were not even thought to be able to be healed in the Age of Legends. She healed Stilling, was able to remove Compulsion. She was able to heal the Madness from the Tain on Sidene. She is also the most talented healer in the world. She is able to learn something after seeing it once, something that most are not able to do. Due to her being the best at, at the talent of healing and her ability to learn so quickly, she gets a 5 out of 5 for talents. Elaine carries the same grouping of Tarangriol and Angriol that Codswain carries, having found her own set in Ebudar. This greatly increases her power. She gets a 5 out of 5 with objects of the power. In terms of her feats of strength, Nynaeve is healed stilling, healed madness, healed compulsion. She defeated the Forsaken Mogidian when she wasn't even at her full strength. 
She also was a part of the circle that cleansed Sidene and the circle that sealed the Bora on the Dark One's prison. But she did not direct the weaves here. She gets a 4 out of 5 with feats of strength. Overall, Nynaeve is extremely powerful and scores a total of 22 out of 25, giving her the number 2 spot. Coming in at number 1 on our list of the most powerful channelers on the side of the light is Randall Thor, the Dragon Reborn. <laughs> In terms of raw power, Rand is as strong as it is possible for someone to be with the one power. It is said that it is not possible to be stronger than he is. He therefore gets a 10 out of 10 for strength. When it comes to talents, Rand is able to split weaves in so many ways it amazes other channelers. The sheer number of things he can do with the power at the same time dwarfs everyone else. He is extremely skilled in weaves that involve battle and killing, and is able to fight duels with the power and not lose really to anyone at the end of the novels. He has the knowledge of the most powerful Aes Sedai of all time, and lose there in Kinslayer. Rand gets a 5 out of 5 with talents. In regards to objects of the power, Rand possesses an Angriol and two of the top three most powerful Sa'angriols ever created for men. The Choding Call is more powerful than Kalindor and Sarkhanan put together before Rand destroys it. No other character comes close to the possessions like this. Rand gets a 5 out of 5 with objects of the power. With feats of strength, this is just flat out ridiculous. So let's, let's go through a couple here. Rand breaks six shields on him at once, defeats four Ashaman trying to kill him at once, cleanses Sidene, defeats an entire army of more than 100,000 Trollocs all by himself with just an Angriol, and then to top it all off, seals the boar in the Dark One's prison. I'd say he's probably earned a 5 out of 5 in feats of strength. In total, Rand gets a perfect score of 25 out of 25, making him the most powerful of all of the Channelers of the Light, and the most powerful in the Channeler in the series. So that's it, my list of the top 10 Channelers of the One Power, for the light. I was surprised that Elaine didn't make the top 10, as I originally had her as like 9 or 10 on my list, but her lack of objects of the power and very few feats of strength on her own, uh, and combined with the fact that she really hadn't reached her full potential, kept her just shy of Moraine. There's also a few other really powerful channelers that didn't quite make the list due to lack of seeing them do much in the series. So tell me, did I get it right? Uh, what did I get wrong? What would your top 10 be and why? Please leave a comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear and start that discussion. Also, I'm finishing up my contest for the free copy of the Eye of the World limited edition that I'll mail out to you wherever you live. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and like and comment. Once I have 100 subscribers, I'll do a random drawing of the first 100 subscribers. If you like the content, please subscribe as you really help the channel grow by doing so. You can also follow me on Twitter at BlissNay to get updates on the channel and see when videos are posted. Thanks so much. So until next time, may Bliss out. <laughs>